Hey everyone, it's Justine. Welcome to my growing garden. So it's been a few weeks since I filmed a garden tour and I actually haven't been in the garden myself because I've been in the field for a few weeks. So I thought I'd do an update about what's growing in the garden, what's new, and we have a few disasters that I thought I'd go over too. All right, so the first new thing in the garden is this irrigation system. So because I was going into the field for a couple weeks and we were expecting it to be um, hot, really hot weather, extreme heat, extreme drought that we're experiencing here. So my husband and I put this irrigation system together um, in a day. It, all the pieces we bought from just Home Depot, it probably isn't the most efficient way to irrigate your garden, but it seems to be doing a pretty good job. It wasn't cheap either. I think you could probably do it in a cheaper way, but we just wanted to do it quickly and make sure that he didn't have to water the garden a ton while I was gone for two weeks. All right, so let's start with this first bed over here. So to start off, we have four tomatoes, which are all I mean, they all have a good amount of tomatoes on them. So this one here are sun golds. I picked a bunch earlier today to make some bruschetta, but um, yeah, it had quite a few on them and I have to tie this up a little bit because it's starting to fall into the middle of the walkway. This one here are the Manitoba giants, or no, giant monster tomatoes. So, I mean, so far they're not giant, but maybe they'll get there. And then over here we have some indigo rose cherry tomatoes. We've had a couple um, ripe ones so far that I once again picked to make bruschetta this for dinner tonight. We have some zucchini, which of course are exploding. This one has one, two, three, four, five, I mean, that middle one doesn't look too good. So five zucchini on that one, and then a few on that one as well. So this here, can't remember what this one is. Let's see. So this is a honey bear winter squash. And if you look back there, there is a little Squash growing. It doesn't look like the flowers opened yet. It doesn't look like there are any other fruit developing, developing yet on that one either. And then this monster of a plant here is an Iran squash, which a friend from work gave to me. And it has started to take over. This is why I love squash because these leaves are just massive. Like, look at the size of that. Um, in terms of fruit set, I haven't really looked under here yet. Um, I don't really see anything yet, but it kind of spreads out a little bit. Oh, it looks like there's one that's gonna bloom in a little bit. Not yet, but soon. Then over here, we have will focus. So this is G Star Summer Squash. So these are green patty pan varieties. I'm not sure if like this is ready to pick. It might be. And then there's another one at the bottom there. So maybe I'll pick these ones soon and give them a try. I haven't tried this variety yet. And then over here, I'm very excited because we have our first Kakuzi gourds starting to develop. There's one there, two over here, and it's starting to climb. This one, instead of climbing up, is climbing to the side, but that's okay. Might have to put that one back as well. So I mentioned at the beginning of this video that I have a couple disasters as well, and hopefully you can see 
all of the grass that's growing through my new no-till garden. It's been so much fun dealing with all this quack grass. And of course, I didn't want to ask my husband to weed the garden for two weeks because we all know how much work that is and I didn't want to give him more work than he needed. But as you can see, it's gotten a little out of hand. So this has kind of been one of my main disappointments of the season. This looks just as bad as it did in the spring. So at this point, I'm not sure what the best way to go about this is. I'm not sure if I should do the same no-till garden maybe in the fall, lay a whole new batch of cardboard down, get more soil delivered and basically start fresh, or if I should maybe try solarizing the garden. There's a wasp flying near my fingers. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, I was, I'm thinking about getting some clear plastic, laying it over now while it's still really warm out because nothing's really growing in this area anyways, so I feel like I'm not going to lose the garden space. There's nothing really, as you can see, I have a couple sunflowers. My corn is looking really sad. There's a couple melons here too, but overall, to me, this is all space that I could just try to kill the grass this year and then this will hopefully be prime planting areas next year. But um, yeah, I'm still trying to figure out what the best uh, way to go about this is. So continuing on here, we have a bunch of tomatoes in the middle, which I need to tie up actually. And then some peppers along the side. And once again, just so much grass. But uh, these are some Sakura um, tomatoes and we've been eating tons of them off the plant so far even with all this grass, you know, at least we're still getting tomatoes. Even a really weedy garden will still give you food. We have a little bit of basil growing in the middle there. And then, I'm not sure, I can't remember what kind of tomatoes these are, but those are some bigger, maybe beef steak or one of the varieties I call the big tomatoes. I'm not exactly sure what variety they are, but they're definitely bigger than most of our cherry tomatoes here. Peppers are doing really well this year too. So we have a Lestia pepper. We've eaten a couple of them off our plants so far. I don't see any other peppers really on this area here. These are some sad little cucumbers. I mean, they're definitely growing. And I'm trying to be patient. I feel like it's only the beginning of August. We still have about a month left of our growing season. Things will get bigger, but it just feels like nothing's big enough. And it also feels like when I compare my garden to everyone else's, everything in this garden seems a lot smaller than it should be. And I think it's a combination of the drought, which we've been dealing with. So we've been dealing with drought. And then because I did the no-till garden, there's a layer of cardboard underneath. And I'm really wondering if that cardboard, because it's not being rained on constantly and the water that I use to water the plants might not be soaking down all the way through. I'm wondering if it's not breaking down in time. So then instead of it breaking down like it would in like, you know, a UK garden, for example, where it's constantly being moist and watered, I'm wondering if it's just acting as a barrier for the roots of the plants and that's why everything's kind of like stunted and small. Don't get me wrong, things are growing and it could just be me being impatient. That's definitely a possibility, but I do feel like things are a little bit slower than they have been in the past. So you can see here, lovely little irrigation system working well. My Brussels sprouts are looking good as well, except for we got some cabbage moth eggs. I don't know if you can see those there. So if you find them, you rub them off to kill them. But the best thing to do is to um, spray your plants with, is it BTT or BT? Not sure exactly what it's called, but yeah, I've seen so many caterpillars on, or sorry, so many butterflies or moths on these today. 
so it's no surprise that these are just absolutely covered in eggs. So I'm gonna go buy some of that organic um, pesticide tomorrow. And of course, if you actually covered these, that helps as well. Um, oh, there's a little wasp drinking there. Just having a little drink. That's probably why it's been flying around me is trying to get a beverage. <laughs> but yeah, you can just see the eggs all over. This is why I never have luck with brassicas because they always get pests on them and the pests always win. And then over here, we have a mixture of things growing. Not sure exactly what's what here. But, oops. I don't see any fruit developing on that one yet. And then this is the same Iran squash that's over there. <laughs> I love squash for this reason. I just love that they take over, they get so big. It's definitely drowning out some of my other varieties though, but here's a little, this is called like an, an English custard, Englisher custard patty pan squash. Not sure when I should pick these either. I'll have to look that up. And then again, the zucchini. And then the tomatoes, which I have to tie up. All right, so if we start down this side, definitely need to tie these tomatoes up. They are falling all over and some of them are actually on the ground, which is a definite no-no. We have some banana peppers here. Just starting to turn red. We've had quite a few of them this year actually. And then this is this little bequino pepper. It has had so many flowers. It doesn't have any. It doesn't look like it does anyways. It has had so many flowers, but has given no fruit so far. Oh, I have to show you these. So these are the lemon spice jalapenos. And I 10 out of 10 recommend. They are so good and they are so colorful. Um, definitely a variety that I'm gonna continue to grow because they just look beautiful, they taste amazing. Um, they're, I would say, just about as spicy as a regular jalapeno, maybe a little bit less. My husband and I just bit into one the other day and then we added them to like a salsa and they were incredible. And they're kind of cool, they have like this purple tinge on them before they turn all yellow, which is pretty neat. more peppers, more tomatoes. Yeah, like these <laughs> tomatoes definitely need to be tied down. They are so big. So these sunflowers, if any of you watch my old videos, I have been having issues with my sunflowers. I think because of the pH of the compost that I bought. Um, and they don't look particularly good, but they have grown. I don't know what's up with this leaf curl that, that they have, but these ones at the bottom are starting to flower, and this one here. And then down here, we have some Kajari melons, which I don't think there's any fruit started on these yet, but they are starting to climb, and I've been kind of, you know, pulling them through so that they do climb. Um, so yeah, hopefully we get some fruit set on those soon and in this area almost embarrassed to show this but I mean this is what real gardening looks like right sometimes you have a whole garden bed full of quack grass and then there's this little melon here it doesn't seem to be getting any bigger this might just be the size that it gets to and it'll start to ripen soon hopefully it's been on the vine for since I left at least so hopefully it gets a little bit bigger soon Another melon here, lots of flowers on it. So hopefully we'll see some fruit soon. And then this area was, so this whole area here was originally gonna be a herb bed with sunflowers. 
and yeah, not much has grown. It was just so hot. When I planted seeds, it was so hot, we got no rain that things just haven't been able to thrive, unfortunately. This has been the toughest year in terms of watering because of our drought. And this is one of the herbs that survived. Cilantro went right to seed, which I mean, cilantro hates heat to begin with, so I wasn't very optimistic that, that was this was gonna give us a lot of, um, I guess, leaves to eat, which is really disappointing because I love being able just to come out here. We eat a lot of cilantro in this house, so a little disappointing that we can't come out and just pick it as we need. These sunflowers just keep getting weirder and weirder. No idea what's going on. Another cilantro that is about to bolt. Even if I, you know, take off these flowers, I think it's already too far gone. Oh, I can't even rip this. I'm gonna leave that for right now. There's a little dill though. That's a little exciting. That's at least one good thing. These sunflowers are looking okay. And then there's some dill growing. <laughs> like everything's just so stunted. Look how small this dill is and it's already flowering. And the flowers are so strange too. Yeah, really not sure. I don't know. Um, if it's because the soil pH and lack of nutrients that we're seeing this type of, you know, stunted growth or if it's because of the lack of rain, there are so many variables this year that I've been having to deal with that it's hard to pinpoint what the issues are. Another little melon here. There's a little baby melon right there. I love growing melons. And then this is another melon of some sort and because it's been so hot and dry, we've been dealing with these guys as well. Grasshoppers. Haven't noticed too much damage yet, but I'm sure it's coming. And then here, growing on this lovely vine, or on this lovely trellis, we have birdhouse gourds. And we have our first ones growing pretty exciting and it's actually getting pretty big and growing on the whole trellis which I wasn't sure if it was going to so considering we have about a month left of our growing season I'm hoping it covers this entire thing and I just can't get over how pretty these flowers are more sunflowers more tomatoes that need to be tied up Little pepper, I think this is, um, that's a weird looking pepper. I think this is uh, a padrone pepper, if I'm not mistaken. Another banana there that looks like it's ready to pick. I wanted to pickle some, but I don't know if we have enough to pickle at the moment. And then yeah, these are all Sakura tomatoes <laughs> that desperately need to be tied up. This one looks like it's basically ready there. So then if I come around here, these two tomatoes here are um, Berry's Crazy Cherry. Those ones look like what I imagine them to look like. Kind of pointy end, grape shaped, grape size. <laughs> these ones are a little weirder looking. You can see those. Not quite the shape and my husband tried one today and he said it was not good. So I will keep you posted. But side note, the sun gold, which is that one right there, the big one in the back, um, he loves them. And I know everyone talks about how great sun golds are. So if you are on the fence about getting them, get them because they are great. 
can't remember what this guy is, but it's just starting to grow, not getting that much bigger, or hasn't gotten that much bigger in the last two weeks. This one has exploded. And I'm trying to see. I think this is a Burgess squash, which was delicious. I'm just trying to see if I can find any. I had that one didn't pollinate. This one looks like it's going to soon. Oh, actually, that one might actually be a pumpkin. Maybe that's coming from a different plant. But it looks like I'm not getting great pollination. There's that one that didn't open, or sorry, that didn't develop. And then this one back there, it doesn't look like it's going to either. So I'm gonna keep an eye out for any other ones that start and start hand, hand pollinating them. And for anyone that doesn't know, um, if you wanna hand pollinate something, you find a male flower, which is like this one here. So it goes from the, I don't know if you can see here. So this is a male flower because it goes right from the stem to the flower. And then this here is an example of a female. And it has the ovary, which is gonna look like a mini version of whatever squash that you're growing. So this here is a female. What you would do is take your male flower, which is back here. You would rip off here, I can just show you. You're gonna rip off all the flowers. And then what you're stuck with is this here that has a bunch of pollen on it. And ideally, what you would do is open this flower since it hasn't even been opened yet. This is gonna be a good one actually to keep the, um, the seeds for. You would open this and rub the pollen all over the inside parts of this female flower, which you can see. And that just ensures that you get good pollination. So yeah, this is a mixture of a pumpkin, I think, and a Burgess squash. I think they're kind of just growing in to one another at the moment. And then that there, I think it's a Burgess squash. or if it focuses there. And then this is a pumpkin. And if you look over, I'll just have to walk over here. Oh, there's two. Always such a nice surprise <laughs> when you look for one and you find two. That's what I love about squash. There's always some hiding underneath. And then, my poor loofahs. This is my second year trying to grow them and second year failing. This one doesn't look bad, but it's not gonna do anything. I mean, it's too late in the season, I think, for any squash to develop. Unfortunately, this one, I mean, it doesn't look terrible, but I mean, there's no flowers on it. The edges are crispy. I'm not very, feeling very hopeful on that one either. This is a uh, firecracker vine. It's not getting very big either, but we'll see what happens. And then I should have waited, but I pulled out the tiniest. It was like this big. If you can see my fingers. A little tiny beet. That was all I got from my little beet patch that I started. And then carrots. I mean, they're there. I have no idea how deep they go or how big they are, but they're there. And then once again, this whole area was supposed to be beets, but it got so hot, lack of rain. I feel like that's gonna be the story going forward for this garden, unfortunately. Then some corn. These have at least gotten a little bit better, or bigger, I should say. Still pretty small though. Some more corn, some asparagus, growing quite nicely actually. Just 
keeps falling down. I use this little stick to try to hold it up, but these sunflowers look okay. Once again, there were supposed to be beans here. There's no beans, though. But this little pumpkin is looking pretty good. I feel like squash and peppers and tomatoes are always the things that I feel like I can grow with no issues. But, you know, I really wanted some variety this year and try some, some new stuff. But, I will try again next year. Here's another squash of some sort. I think this is like a lemon squash, lemon drop squash, something along those lines. And then yeah, once again, these little berries, crazy cherry. There's so many tomatoes on these two plants. I'm gonna have to tie, like, look at this. Definitely gonna have to tie that down. And then over here, I need to water this. It's looking pretty dry. But this is my um, sweet potato. Looking pretty good, getting extra viney. Really excited to see what we got going on in there. And then my flower patch. Because I didn't deadhead these snapdragons, because I was gone, um, it looks like they're not really developing any second sets of flowers. So I'm not sure, last year this my snapdragons went all the way to the fall and this year I don't think that they're going to unfortunately. If they've all gone to seed like that, I think I'm out of luck. These ones still look pretty good though, those yellow ones. Sunflowers are looking good. These sunflowers are so pretty. These are the pro light cut flowers, they're pro light sunflowers. They're beautiful in little bouquets. The calendulas, calendula's looking good. I've cut a few or deadheaded a few flowers off so that I can save um, the flowers for soaps for the fall. This um, delphinium has gone to seed. Look at these cool little seed heads. So I'm just going to So that hopefully we get some more next year. I'm just gonna harvest a couple of um, these potatoes for dinner tomorrow. So I'm just gonna go grab my fork and lift some of these up. enjoyed the garden tour today if you have any questions or comments please leave them down below and if you enjoyed the video please make sure to hit the like and subscribe button i'll talk to you next week and i hope you have a great week in the garden